You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Well, welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today, Jay Ingram, who is a finalist for High Plains Book Awards. Uh, he has a book called Science of Why. It's actually volume four. And we'll talk about that book in a minute. But first of all, uh, Jay, maybe you could tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, I uh, am Canadian, born in Winnipeg. I lived in Edmonton, Alberta for, for my undergrad. Went to Toronto to do graduate work. Did a media career in Toronto, both radio and TV and then moved to, to Calgary because I had fallen in love with the mountains decades before. And uh, this is really the best place, best major city in Canada to live if you want to be close to the mountains. I started, uh, my interest in science was probably kindled at home, but I think maybe by parents who were a little unaware of what they were doing <laughs> in that uh, when I was quite young, like six or seven, um, my mother encouraged me to become a bird watcher, which was, you know, I'm very sorry for many reasons that she has died, but I never asked her, why bird watching? Why did you, because she wasn't a bird watcher as far as I could tell. Anyway, and then when I was in grade seven, so I didn't think that was weird, being a bird watcher at the age of seven. And then when I was in grade seven, um, I had a microscope and I used to collect pond water and look at the organisms in it. And then, you know, like I was uh, sort of, uh, you know, aware of what other people's feelings were. I was like a typical grade seven kid. You don't want to seem odd. And yet it never occurred to me that probably none of my friends were going out collecting pond water and looking at it in a microscope and naming, naming the organisms, you know, Daphnia, paramecia and all that kind of stuff. So I somehow, and then, you know, honestly, if I go back over all the science teachers I had in school and even university, uh, very few of them inspired me. Now, maybe that's because I was already kind of inspired, um, but, you know, in the school setting, science just didn't have that life that I had associated with. And, but my whole career has been writing, writing and talking about science. And uh, I started uh, decades ago, actually, in a little radio station in Toronto that did a little bit of educational radio. So I got into it that way. And then uh, graduated to doing CBC radio, a radio program called Quirks and Quarks. And then uh, when Discovery Channel came to Canada in 1995, uh, I was tasked with developing a nightly hour-long science show for Discovery Channel Canada, which we did. And uh, it ran until 2018, but I left it a few years before that. And then I've been writing books like The Science of Why. And as you said, this was the fourth volume that's up for the award. A fifth will be coming out this November. And then whether there'll be, I never thought there was gonna be a second. So. The fact that there have been, there will have been five uh, is pretty cool. And that's where I am right now. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just mention, uh, I remember listening to you on Quirks and Quarks in the uh, 80s, I think, probably. I was living in eastern Montana and we'd pick you up out of Saskatchewan. And uh, uh, Quirks and Quarks continues and it's on uh, public radio here in Billings. Uh, every day on uh, Mondays, 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, so it was quite a good show. Oh, let's talk about your book. You have, uh, I think, eight books out uh, now. There are three for children, and this is your most current? Yeah, well, you know, I, I suspect I've written a lot. Of, I've written 19 books, but uh, some of them, the early ones, because really my first book was in 1988. Um, it was a book for kids about twins, actually. Uh, and then I wrote a book called The Science of Everyday Life for adults in 89. And then I've just been writing books more or less consistently since then. But a lot of those early ones 
are probably out of print. So uh, you're probably closer to the right number. And the science of why, uh, you know, you can still find it in bookstores. And uh, we never really, you know, we never really set out to aim it at young readers. It was more um, a case of everyone from 12 to infinity was what the president of Simon and Schuster Canada said. And um, it seems to work that way. But, uh, you know, I really like the fact that 10 and 12 and 14 year olds are reading the Science of Why series because, you know, uh, they get science in school, but it's a different approach. And quite often the, the glamorous, the, the mysterious, the intriguing, the outlying sort of stuff never gets covered in school. So I think it's good that young people have, those who are interested have an option to read about it. Well, so this, uh, this book addresses some of those basic kinds of questions about science facts that people might be interested in, some of the uh, various phenomena that uh, you might observe and wonder about. Um, I think, uh, you know, first, just for people who aren't familiar with the format, the, I'm gonna put quotes around this, chapters are really essays. And I mean, they're not multiple pages. The, the longest might be 1,500 words. Some of them, they probably hover around 900 to 1,000 words. So these are uh, short uh, pieces addressed to a particular topic. But you know, when you have a question and the answer is pretty straightforward, uh, then you know, writing a 1,000 words means you've actually expanded on the potential answer. And there are also questions that where the answer is we don't know yet. So to me, if you're interested in science and you're interested in science in a very broad sense, because I even like to know, I like to dig into why people believe in fantastic stuff like Atlantis or Bigfoot. Now, of course, in Montana and Alberta, we know Bigfoot lives, but people in other parts of the world aren't, uh, aren't quite as up to the mark as we are. Uh, but, the, but they're interesting things nonetheless because every one of them involves science of some kind. And I think people tend maybe to have a narrow view of science that it's all about uh, finding a vaccine for COVID-19, uh, you know, building better iPhones and all that kind of stuff. But in fact, science is probably the world's greatest adventure story and it covers everything. There is really no subject that isn't tinged with science. So in the Science of Y4, I wrote about Shakespeare. And was Shakespeare really the author of all the Shakespearean plays? And this has been a, this has been a two century long debate, but the, the most interesting recent research into this is looking at the phrases and the arrangement of words and then comparing them structurally using computers uh, to some of the other possible authors. So here's a thing that, that strikes you as English literature, that's what that is. But no, there's a science component and it's helping to uh, direct the argument. So I like to poke into little corners like that and tackle things that people might not even realize are connected to science in any way. Yeah, I'll make a, I'll make a confession though. Um, so some of the questions that I've addressed in the four science of wise to date um, have been questions that, um, you know, that you always hear. Why is the sky blue? Um, can you, you know, can you yawn without closing your eyes? Uh, these kinds of things. But some of them I admit to inventing because I come across a really cool piece of science and I think, you know, I can just turn this into a question <laughs> and then answer it. Um, so uh, again, I'll take an, uh, an example from the one that's coming out because it's fresher in my mind. Um, there was a paper published in the journal Science arguing that the year 536 was the worst year ever. I read that. And I, I, so I wrote about it. And of course I wrote it in 2020, which now would, might well qualify uh, at least as a contender for that title. Uh, but you know, no one goes, 
I don't think many people go around, maybe they do now in 2020, saying, what was the worst year ever? But I just thought, you know what? It's so interesting. And this had to do with, in Europe, uh, the temperature dropped average of two degrees because of volcanic ash coming over from North America. And then there was the, the first bubonic plague and vandals were overrunning cities. It was really not a good time to be alive. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a pretty broad perspective on science, which would imply a, a more large audience uh, of uh, adults and, and also um, younger people. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the audience is pretty broad. I've been pretty lucky. Well, you've also been very good. So um, we're delighted to be able to visit with you today. And, and uh, I, I just want to thank you for uh, giving us this interview. So anyway, uh, great talking to you. I wish, I wish that the festival this year was live and in person, and uh, you know one could do that. But uh, this is this is pretty good. So thank you. Well, okay. So long. Yeah. Bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.